Mini PCs used to be these cute little boxes that could barely open Chrome without overheating. But this, this is a little monster from Lenovo. It's fast, silent, power efficient, and the best thing is that it's dirt cheap right now in second-hand market. Today I'm diving deep into what I believe is the only mini PC you should buy right now. Not because it's the newest or fastest, but because it nails everything that most people need in 2025. The Lenovo ThinkCenter M9010Q Tiny might just be the most underrated mini PC you can buy right now. But what exactly is M910Q Tiny? Well, originally released as a business desktop, it's now a favorite among tech-savvy users, tinkerers and budget-conscious buyers. Because right now businesses are getting rid of them in bulk and you can scavenge them like me for about 60 euros. For specs, well, I've got this baby equipped with i5-6500T low TDP CPU, but this puppy supports even to 7 Gen i7s. But I heard that with some modding you can put even 9 Gen i9 in there. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm not lying. And as for the RAM, I have 8GB of DDR4 SO DIMM memory. But I can upgrade any time to 32GB of RAM. That's the maximum that this Lenovo supports. There is also a Wi-Fi module slot in there. And as for the storage, this Lenovo supports two NVMe M.2 drives. But because I bought it from company, there was no storage inside there. That's why I put 120GB Western Digital Green NVMe drive, who was laying down in my shelf anyways. But besides that, there is also a place to put 2.5 inch SSD drive. Neat, isn't it? Lenovo boiled this thing like a tank. Solid metal chassis, enterprise grade reliability and super clean internal layout. It's actually pretty fun to work on. As for ports, you get two display ports, four USB 3.1 ports, gigabit Ethernet and optional serial port. It actually got all the essentials you need for home server, office PC or media hub. But the best part is that this small boy uses laptop brick for the power. That's why it's perfect let's say for Minecraft server. But now let's see with what kind of scores we are working with in some real life benchmarks. As for the first benchmark, I run Cinebench R23. An i5 scored in single core performance 776 points and in multi-core performance test it scored 2628 points. And as for the second test, I run good old 3 d Mark's Time Spy. Of course, you can't expect much of a big graphics score here because of integrated Intel HD 530 graphics. Therefore, graphics score was 525 points. And as for the CPU score, CPU scored 2112 points. Now, is it a gaming rig? Mm, no, but here is the everything it's good at web browsing for 20 plus chrome tabs without overheating of course microsoft office like word excel powerpoint easy 1080p or i might even say even 4k video playback for number fourth <laughs> emulating old retro games yes and as for the fifth i already said game server dedicated minecraft or let's say ATS game server. But if you grabbed one with i7-7700T, well, let's say you are getting pretty good quad-core performance with a very, I repeat, very low power draw. One of the biggest perks of this system is how efficient it is. On idle, it draws under 10 watts. For full load, well, maybe 40 watts max. I might even say that it's more efficient than my light bulb. And it stays cool. Yeah, the built-in blower style cooler does its job without sounding like a leaf blower. Even during longer stress tests, it never overheated or throttled down. 
the speeds of the CPU. Of course, I tested it with i5-6500 without the CPU. That's like normal Intel CPU, not lower TDP one. And yeah, it overheated pretty much at the first test I threw at it. But that's why it comes with lower TDP T-series CPUs, which will you normally see in laptops. And of course T-series CPUs helps with power consumption itself. But Lenovo's included power brick draws only 65 watts from the outlet maximum. You might say, yeah, but I don't need one. I have my trustworthy gaming PC. But you know what I'm using mine for? For like two months now, non-stop 24-7 for game server hosting with installed Ubuntu 24.04 LTS. And you know what? If you like to host game server, let's say Minecraft, to play with your friends or family members, that this tiny friend will cost you same as normal fast three months Minecraft server hosting subscription. And you know what? Matter of fact, this thing is more stable, at least for me. Okay, let's talk a little bit about upgrades. Let's say you want to max it out. 30 bucks for 32 GB sticks. Easy. 40 bucks for 512 GB NVMe drive. And boom, you've got Mini Beast for under 300 bucks total. That's unheard of in today's market, especially considering how well it handles daily use. Therefore, I encourage you to take a good look at overall image. It's a pretty good deal, if I can say so myself. But now, let's be a little bit real for a second. It's not for gaming, heavy video editing or 3D modeling. The integrated HD graphics are good for, let's say, video playback or 2D games. That's why don't expect AAA performance out of this tiny little puppy. If you need a GPU and CPU power, you will want something better and bigger overall. But for 90% of daily tasks, this box punches way above its weight. So here's the deal. If you are looking for silent, compact, reliable and insanely affordable PC for daily use, light work or let's say Linux tinkering. The Lenovo ThinkCenter M9010Q Tiny is it. Don't even look for anything else. Whether you are building home lab, need a sleek, clean looking desk setup, or let's say you want to breed a new life with second monitor. This is the only mini PC I recommend it to buy right now, who is under 100 bucks. All right, that wraps up it for today. Mm, I think. If you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up. I appreciate it. And it really helps the channel and show me if you want to more videos like this. So give it thumbs up or thumbs down. That's my benchmark for YouTube. And if you have questions about this M9010Q Tiny, write down in the comment section. Or maybe you already have one with two monitors and clean looking setup. I will read every comment and I will try to reply to everybody. But now, thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and yeah, that's about it. I will see you in the next video.